Christian Communications Network from Belfast, Northern Ireland, welcomes you to today's programme. Here is Deciding Your Destiny with Dr. Cecil Stewart, OBE. And I'm very excited about this wonderful theme today, which I have proved that changed my whole life. It's called Atmosphere for Increase. Do you need an increase of peace in your heart? Do you need an increase of joy? Do you need increased health? Do you need increased financial blessing? The Lord has showed us powerful principles that he's quickened to me by the power of the Holy Spirit that will bring increase to any believer if you put your faith to work. Increase is promised in the Word of God over and over again. And I'll mention several of the ways that we will be given opportunity to increase for God and for the kingdom so we can become more effective to reach our hurting world and broken people. If we are without increase and without hope, we can't help anybody. But if we are people living in the good of God's blessing, God's favor, God's peace, our families will be affected, our connections and work will be affected, everybody we meet. So we want to talk about this atmosphere for increase, not against increase, but we need to recognize that this is a time of God's favor because of the cross, because of what Jesus did in Calvary. We're living in a time of great favor, even though it may be turbulent in the world and very hostile out there. As believers, we can saturate our beings in the Word of God and in the power of the Holy Spirit. So we're living in the good of His peace and power and presence. The scripture says in Proverbs that the one who is of a merry heart has a continual feast. So if you have a heart that's full of joy and peace, then you are in a position of strength. The joy of the Lord is your strength. So we need to recognize the time, that this is a time of favor and a time of great need for us to share the love of God and the good news of the gospel to everyone. And often we benefit from this kind of uh, action in faith at a time when we don't feel able to do it. The good news is you don't have to feel able. Use your faith and speak out and God will move in your life. Recognize the privilege we have and the season we live in and the value of the Word of God. Value the Word of God highly. It's more precious than any other word. Value your relationship with Jesus more than any other relationship. Value your family, your friends, your church highly. Let's add value to people, even though they have faults, as we all have. I found out whenever I was a young believer from an experience I had by, without even realizing it, I was holding a bad attitude toward a young believer. I thought he was proud. I thought he was not uh, behaving right and thought he was foolish. But I found out I was the one that was wrong. So we need to watch we don't hold a bad attitude toward people that brings devaluation instead of valuing them highly. We need to add value to people. And so we need to remember too, 2 Corinthians 6 verse 2, now is the accepted time, now is the day of salvation. It doesn't mean just salvation from sin, it means wholeness, healing from sicknesses, freedom from depression, anxiety, healing of broken relationships, healing of all kinds. Jesus came to make us whole and he will if we take his word seriously into our hearts. My wife and I both found this to be true. Both of us were told at different times in our lives we had cancer. My wife was given days to live. Her whole story is available on request if you want to get in touch with us. And I was also told in 2003 I had a cancerous tumor. I was told I had tuberculosis when I was much younger. So we've known tragedy and setbacks, but we've known the power of God that brought us through all of these struggles and all of the disappointments, even the loss of a child. God Almighty knows how to restore your life and heal you from the valley of disappointment and lift you up. So we need to have an atmosphere of increase, even though we may have had setbacks. God wants to use our setbacks to cause us to be stronger in the days ahead. And so atmosphere for increase, the main part of this story is based on the feeding of the 5,000 in John chapter 6, 
read the story from verse 1 through 14. It was a time when there was no increase. There were in a wilderness thousands of people with Jesus, not enough food, no money to buy enough food. They were in a very much depressed economy and things looked really bad and nobody had an answer. Philip said, we haven't enough money to buy food. Andrew said, this five loaves and two fishes is not enough. But Jesus settled the argument by speaking and saying, make the men sit down. He prayed over the five loaves and two fishes and he began to break it and give it to his disciples. And as they gave it away, then increase happened, increase happened, increase happened. And all of them were fed more than they could eat. And there was 5,000 men besides women and children. There was 12 baskets full left over. So when we let the mind of Christ operate in us, let the word of God prevail over the words of men and over the circumstances by acting on the word, by going right away and beginning to act like the word is true because it is true, then God begins to work when we work, God works, when we use our faith and step out believing God. And the scripture tells us in Acts 2, 47, the Lord added to the church daily. God's kingdom, the very nature of it, is increase. He wants his church to grow. He wants kingdom influence to increase. He wants us to grow to become bigger people, more mature, able to handle conflict in life and able to still love people even when they hurt us. And he wants us to believe that we have more than enough ability in God to cope with every situation in life. And so the scripture tells us also in the book of Isaiah that of the increase of the kingdom of God there will be no end. And that's in Isaiah 9 verse 7. He also tells us in Psalms 115 verse 14 the Lord will increase you more and more, you and your children. God has increase on his mind. God wants to increase your joy. God wants to increase your faith. He wants to increase favor around you and financial blessing. But you must begin to think like he thinks, talk like he talks, and use your faith just as they did on that day in John chapter 6. So many scriptures on this, but you can increase your joy and sadness will go. You can increase your faith and fear will go. You can increase love and hatred will grow. It will leave you. So we need to start developing the blessings that God has given us. And so in this story in John chapter 6, there are a few key things in the short time I have I'd like to mention. Number one, they were in fellowship with the Father. The disciples and Jesus were up in the mountain. They were in fellowship with the Father together. Before the problem arose of the multitude that couldn't have any food, they were already in fellowship with the Father. Then when they came down from the mountain, it says Jesus saw the multitude. He lifted up his eyes and he saw the multitude of hurting, of broken, of hungry people. And that's what we see around us every day. People have tried to find answers in all the wrong places. Drugs, alcohol, relationships that all have hurt them further. We need to be in fellowship with the Father. That's the top priority. Take time out to spend time with the Lord, worshiping him, praising him, praying for others, meditating his word. So they were in fellowship with the Father. That's what Jesus died to do. He died to restore fellowship with our maker, the Lord God Almighty. Secondly, focus on others. Don't just look at your own need. Start to reach out to others, even though you may not feel able. Do what you can to bless other people. Jesus lifted up his eyes and looked at the multitude and then he began to move to do something about meeting their need. Not because it looked possible, it was impossible. Don't wait for everything to look possible. Use your faith, God Almighty will provide a way. And I have many little hope builders, including on this theme of increase and blessing and favor. If you just get in touch with us at CCN, we'll let you have a copy absolutely free. It'll build your faith and hope. Tells us there in Proverbs 29, verse 18, where there's no vision, people perish. So we need to get a vision of God's plan for our lives. God has no plan for your defeat. He never planned your depression or sickness or disease or broken relationships. That's mostly the work of the devil and sometimes a result of our own poor choices. But no matter what it is, 
Jesus provided the solution. And through repentance and surrender to Jesus, you can be transformed even now. We found healing, Evelyn and I both, miraculous transformation of our health and finances. We've traveled many parts of the world ministering to hundreds of thousands and millions of people. And we know that the gospel works. His word is powerful. The power of the Holy Spirit transforms people's lives. And so it tells us also in John chapter 13, verse 35, by this shall all men know you're my disciples because you love one another. So we need to show the love of God. We have that love in our hearts. We may not feel it, but the scripture says that he has shed his love abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. So release that love. It will overcome hatred, bitterness, division. It will transform everything. So focus on others. Number three, pursue potential, not problems. Andrew and Philip in this story in John chapter 6, they were looking at the problems. We haven't enough money. Oh, we haven't enough food. But Jesus got up and he said, give me what you have got. And he began to give it out and use what he got. And as he did, those supplies turned loose, miraculous supplies to feed the multitude. So pursue potential. Don't pursue the problem. Don't meditate upon all the bad things that's happened, the disappointments, the wrong choices you made. That's past. Give it over to Jesus. He has paid the price. You can rise up and begin to live a brand new life of victory and experience an atmosphere for increase everywhere you go. Number four, plan the best in the worst test. Jesus knew what he would do, it says. Even when they were in a crisis with no food and no drink, nothing for the people, they had no provision out there in the wilderness, but Jesus knew what he would do. So even in the worst days, you plan answers. And there's a great need for people who will become solution providers. How can you provide a solution to somebody? By a smile, by a good word of encouragement, by maybe helping them, by praying for them, by visiting somebody who's lonely. Every one of us can do some little thing every day to be an answer. Even if we're having a bad time ourselves, we can still reach out. Plan the best in the worst test. You may have had a bad disappointment. We suffered that. For example, we lost our television cameras in Italy after a crusade. We, we lost in Belgium when we had missions there. Somebody misused funds. And we had many disappointments, but it didn't stop us going on because overall God wants you to have increase. There will be setbacks, there will be challenges, but if we keep our faith alive and keep walking in the love of God, we will have increase continually. And lastly, number five, put your mind on the maximum. Philip and Andrew in this story in John chapter six, had their mind on the minimum, but Jesus had his mind on the maximum. Not just enough to feed the multitude, but 12 baskets left over. Jesus came to give abundance. And that's what it says in Ephesians 3.20, that he wants to do exceeding abundantly above all you could ask or even think, according to the power that works in you. So you need to get the word in you so it can work. Your mind renewed, meditating, not just glancing at it, but actually taking time out to meditate. That's why these little hope builders are so important, like the transforming power of thanksgiving. If you read it, it will get on the inside of you. It will bring new faith and hope, and you will be blessed and helped. It's absolutely free. Just get in touch at CCN, and we'll send it to you. Put your mind on the maximum. Believe God for the salvation of your family. All of my family were saved through the prayers of my mother. Just one believer prayed all nine of us into the kingdom, seven boys and two girls, restored us to health. She was healed of an ulcer which was going to kill her. We've received miracles many, many times. Jesus is a miracle worker. He is a life giver. And so he comes to bring increase, not to subtract from us. Satan comes to steal, to kill and destroy. But Jesus came that we might have life, that we might have it more abundantly. And so he exhorts us to have the mind of Christ in Philippians chapter 2, verse 5. So have your mind renewed by getting a copy of these Hope Builders. Get in touch. We have a prayer band. We'll pray for you. And God bless you. And thank you for watching today. In Jesus' name. Amen.
information on today's programme, contact us today. CCN 547 Antrim Road, Belfast, County Antrim, Northern Ireland. BT 15 3BU. Telephone 02890 779 552. Email ccn at ccnorg.com. Check us out on Facebook and YouTube and visit our website ccnorg.com. Oh,